<laughs> what is up guys, Fahan here. Welcome back to another Ultimate Review. This is the review of the Harley Davidson Road Glide. Huge thanks to Harley Davidson Asia Pacific for bringing me this bike for the review. And I have to say that I'm pretty nervous about this one. Uh, but we're gonna give our best uh, for the review. Alright guys, so this is the review of the Harley Road Glide Special. I have to say I'm pretty nervous about this one because it's a huge bike. Okay. <laughs> Weighing at 372 kilograms is a very heavy bike, so sitting on it. Oh my god. <laughs> yep, pretty nervous about this one. Really pretty nervous. You can really feel the weight when you are lifting up the bike you know with your right leg in order to balance it so the road glide uses a transponder and the keys they are for the handlebar lock and also to lock the side cases or saddlebags which what Harley calls them twist the knob and you can see the gauge cluster lighting up with the infotainment system also coming on make sure the kill switch is turned on and the ignition <laughs> oh my gosh typical Harley startup okay and we're just gonna turn it off for a while because I want to show you guys the infotainment system okay so uh, being a bagger a bagger is actually a class of motorcycle that describe the Honda Goldwing and the road glide uh, the street glide and the Indian chieftain this big clunky American style cruises in the Americas they call them baggers lah. so this term actually originates sometime back in the 1800s during the horse carriage days in which saddlebags are used to put around the horse and the term is carried on for motorcycles today lah, which is pretty interesting yeah. but the bagger term is mostly exclusive to United States I think outside of United States this class of bikes is usually called touring bike lah. Harley themselves they classify bikes such as the road glide as Grand American Tourist so it's on the website check it out automatically when you start the infotainment system lights up the radio turns on so right now we are in the kapak so there's no signal lah. fortunately cannot show you guys the radio but we're gonna toggle to the navigation system and the navigation oh my god look at this it shows us where we are so for example i want to go to junction 8 okay just typing out junction 8 search so it's a 5.25 uh full tft touch screen by the way almost like a cell phone it's been treated to be glare proof when you're under the sun the route is being calculated <laughs> this is so cool please sir. proceed to the highlighted route you don't even need google maps or your phone mounted on this but i have to have my phone mounted because all the information for uh the bike is all here <laughs> the right height is 69.5 and pretty much uh tiptoeing slightly on this bike because of its wide nature you really have to like you know sit in a position that is wide and you know when you're sitting on it it's kind of this front feet position but at the same time it's pretty comfortable pretty ergonomical i've never been more comfortable on a harley before so yeah <laughs> let's start her up once again <laughs> my favorite part is probably the tft display which can display navigation which is a pretty cool touch all right so <laughs> i am very very nervous about this because it's such a heavy bike but once you get used to riding it it's actually okay like it's not that bad the hurry road ride first impressions is that it's a really heavy clunky cumbersome bike on the city streets it's not built for the city streets it's mostly a highway tourer and you are really meant to bring the road glide down on the highway at high speeds but unfortunately in my case we have to do the review on city streets unfortunately so we'll just do our best lah and even on the highway i'm restricted to 90 uh, kilometers per hour but we're still gonna do the review anyway so it's lunchtime right now in the cbd 
Oh my god, people are jaywalking everywhere here. You have to be really cautious. Uh. It's not a bike that you want to go slow with, seriously. But once you get used to the handling, you can actually conquer it on city streets. Uh. And my experience with the bike so far, I've never lifted it above four for gear before. Even on the highway. Because being restricted at 90 kilometers per hour. Uh, <laughs> I think fourth gear will just do lah. But damn man, you know when you're riding this bike, I've been riding this bike for like 3 days now and everybody looks at you when you're on this bike. It's really a head turner, even pedestrians look at it, drivers look at it, and in the cars when you're glancing right, you can really see them looking up and down at the bike. <laughs> it's a real attention seeking bike this uh, road glide. Uh. Oh man, but lane splitting is gonna be an issue given the bike's wide nature and I'm not gonna lane split in this because it's pretty scary and expensive to be lane splitting with. <laughs> Root, recalculation. Root recalculating. Okay, so we're gonna try the radio. Huh? So the radio is still kind of bad Maybe because of the reception in this area But I'm just going to turn it off And you guys are going to hear my review lah. But I think later for the static review We're going to play the radio a little bit For you to sample the boom sound system That's fitted stock on this bike <laughs> having trouble putting it on neutral <laughs> I think there's more tinkering to do with the infotainment system given how versatile it is but basically standard Harley handlebar control supply with the split signal indicators means when you're turning right it's on the right handlebar control and turning left is on the left handlebar control horn high beam low beam there's also traction control on it hazard light starter engine kill switch and the two thumb controls that control the infotainment system which i must say is really 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 versatile uh, i gotta play the radio again oh my god <laughs> Oh my god, it's a real treat, man. Yeah. You know, I've always loved the Goldwing, and to be riding a similar class of bike as the Goldwing is a real treat. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're right back to the navigation. So, we're going to Bishan right now, which is my home. Now, turn I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly where my home is. Oh, we missed the turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, recalculating <laughs> And on the highway It shows an interesting graphic when you're about to make an exit Later we're gonna show lah I hope we pass by an exit or something so that I can show you guys But damn man, I really love it So I got 3 days with the bike and the first 2 days was really more of a learning curve for me Given that this bike is really cumbersome to ride on It's a big clunky machine that takes some getting used to but once you get used to the handling and once you're used to it oh man it really handles like a dream man and it does get hot pretty quickly I mean you can feel your inner shins <laughs> burning up right now but it's okay you ride a Harley for the riding pressure and experience and also the thumping engine not for the inconveniences that it brings you <laughs> but I have to say damn man it's a real treat to be riding it right now really thankful to Harley Davidson Asia Pacific ah we missed another time <laughs> I don't know if we ever get to the highway but hopefully we do lah the Harley Davidson roguelite nameplate has been in use since the 1990s built to navigate the American interstate highway system this long haul tourer is designed to compete with the likes of other American baggers, such as the Honda Goldwing. These days, the Road Glide has become an icon of the American interstate. Modernized and freshened for the 21st century, it still retains its signature front end sharp nose design and general outlook. Engine for the 2022 Road Glide Special is the Milwaukee 8114, an 1868cc air cooled 4 stroke 4 valves V twin pushrod operated overhead cams with electronic sequential port fuel injection and a 6-speed cruise drive manual transmission. 
Alright guys, so take note, there's actually three variations of the Harley Road Glide. So for the standard edition, which uses a Milwaukee 8 107 V-Twin. And there's the special edition, which this particular one being reviewed right now, which comes with the Milwaukee 8 114 engine. And the limited edition, which also has the Milwaukee 8 uh, 114, but it comes with a pillion backrest and top box. So just something to take note, lah. there are different specifications and different features for each of the variation of roguelites. So let's talk about the seating position, lah. seating ergonomics, all figured out. Um, this is probably the most comfortable I've ever been on a Harley Davidson. <laughs> very, very, very comfortable, typical touring bike position, you know, arms wide open, legs aren't that stretched out or folded in quite a bit. Very much comfortable, um, slightly fits forward. In my personal opinion, riding long distances will be a breeze on this. Eh? So I'm 165 and the ride height is 69.5, but even though it's one of the more shorter ride heights, uh, on a bike, I'm pretty much tiptoeing slightly because of the bike's white nature. And on top of that, I'm actually tiptoeing even more because the engine does get pretty hot. This is a typical Harley signature, I guess. <laughs> and also to add on a word of caution, the side stand is in a really awkward position. The typical Harley side stand, and because my legs are short, I really have to get in there and push the side stand out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it looks as if that the side stand is not really out more, but it's actually, uh, that is the maximum. So just to be safe, just kick it a bit more, put the bike down in side stand uh, because I don't really want to drop the road glide. <laughs> so we got to talk about the general design of the road glide. <laughs> um, I have to say that it's pretty radical with the signature shark nose design and dual headlamp. Also the side cases over here, but if you remove all of that, the standard design language of the American style cruiser aesthetics still apply to rope light. With the tank, the seat, the rear fender, and the front mud guard, and also the crash guard, and also the engine. So the shark nose front end is supposed to improve wind resistance on the highway. I reckon that on high speeds, when you're riding this bike, you don't really feel the wind in your face or your body. You know, it deflects the wind pretty well, and even though it has a low windshield, right? But I think because of the design of the shark nose, really cuts through the wind very well. You don't feel the wind on your face or your body. And it's a very comfortable highway cruiser. Lah. The dual exhaust hidden by the side cases is standard on the road glide. And for the special, there's an option of a chrome or blackout engine. And surprisingly, the chrome engine is much more expensive because I think the processes to get chrome on the parts is more tedious than simply spraying it black, lah, I would guess. All LED lighting for the front and rear with the exception of the two signal indicators on the front which still uses incandescent bulbs. And interestingly, they are color-coded in orange as opposed to transparent. Most manufacturers have actually moved away from the orange indicator lights. And personally, as a guy who loves orange, this is a really nice touch. And also unique because most manufacturers have really strayed away from orange indicator light bulbs to the transparent one. But Harley really struck the radiation and I think it's a really nice touch for a guy who loves orange. So let's talk about the handlebar controls. Uh, classic, typical Harley handlebar controls apply on this. But there's also additional thumb controls for you to navigate the infotainment system. And I have to say that the infotainment system is really in-depth and there's a lot of features you can tinker around with the bike. But most notably for the road glide, it has a full TFT 5.25 inch Gorilla Glass touch screen display that is treated to have less reflection and in the sun you can really see the screen perfectly there's no glare or reflection on it it has phone connectivity navigation music radio really versatile connectivity via apple carplay and android auto and there's also a highly different app which recommends you routes and places of interest while you're touring you know it's like what <laughs> what? An infotainment system is paired with a four speaker 25 watt per channel sound system. So let's hear her out. Huh? Every home trusted global brands from USA. MediaCorp Connect Now. Here's what some of our clients have to oh say. Oh my god. MediaCorp's platform allows our business to connect to customers either on a large scale or to target a specific segment and Connect helps what? us maintain proper find away. What? Register at Connect Now. <laughs> this is pretty awesome, man. Oh my gosh. Not to forget speedometer, tachometer, uh, pretty much analog, okay, retains that classic look 
of a Harley Davidson and there's also some LED warning light and a tiny LCD display which displays the odometer, trip meter, gear indicator but the LCD really helps with uh, displaying uh, extra info on it. Lah. For riding tech, Harley didn't really advertise it on its website for some reason but doing my research, there's actually a lot of riding tech on the road glide and uh, surprisingly it's really well hidden in it, okay? <laughs> uh, you don't see it showing off in the, the handlebar controls, even the gauge cluster, infotainment system. It's basically there to help with the riding experience at Rogue Light. Lah. So, uh, this ride by wire throttle, cornering and hand sling ABS, traction control, drag torque slip control system. So, what the drag torque slip control system actually does is that suddenly there's an accident or whatever in front of you, right? And you need to brake quickly. When you downshift quickly, right? Uh, it helps mitigate the sudden deceleration by matching the engine's RPM to the rear speed wheel. Lah. So I don't know why would somebody stop like that, but I think in other countries, they will use the engine braking to stop the bike in case of an emergency. Lah. So for us, we're not really taught to stop with uh, engine braking. We're usually taught to stop with the brakes. Lah. So I think certain countries, they actually use the engine braking as an emergency brake. Lah. Okay, so other than the navigation, music, and phone connectivity, you can also check on the bike itself. As you can see, this is the information about the bike, the engine info, you know, and also the tire pressure monitoring system. I mean, the rear tire is low on pressure right now. <laughs> and also the trip summary, and what time we started, what time we ended. Everything about this bike, man, it's really versatile. So, horn check for the Harley Road Glide. Nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Right, so there's two variations of pricing for the Road Glide. Uh, the two tone colors will be $70,900. Single tone color, $69,900. So do take note that the price excludes COE and insurance. So it's strictly machine price. Booking fees of $4,000 apply for existing or incoming stock, and $8,000 for Indian orders. So the price is inclusive of custom duties, ARF, license plate, registration fees, road tax, 7% GST, IU unit and bracket. Comes with a two-year unlimited mileage warranty, after sales support provided by Harley Davidson of Singapore for servicing parts, accessories and general Harley Davidson merch. Additionally, for new purchases of all HD motorcycles, customers receive a one-year complimentary HOG international membership, which allows them to access to HOG assist programs for roadside assistance. Into 100 meters onto the Street. Okay, can no problem. Now turn sharp. But right. damn, this navigation system over here really is a whole new level for the good glide because man, you don't really need your phone mount. I mean, you can even connect your phone via the built in Bluetooth connectivity. And it's really versatile. I had tinkered around with the infotainment system and damn man, it's really awesome. Sir. And oh man, <laughs> when you are negotiating bend or corners, you really have to take it slow because it's just a bike. It's a bike that doesn't really want to turn. Give us long, clunky nature. But I reckon that it's a compromise, it's a huge compromise lah when you're riding on city streets lah. Given the length and the wide nature of the Harley uh, Rook Glide. So I'm not sure what gear I'm at right now. <laughs> okay, neutral gear. And I have to say I love the gauge cluster even though it's the speedometer and the RPM is analog. The, there's a tiny LCD display which displays your trip meter, gear indicator, and everything. So even though it weighs like 370 plus kg, right? Uh, when you're on it, when you're on the road, when you're in motion, you don't really feel the weight at all. It, it somewhat disappears as you're riding. And, but on start-stop situation, uh, I have to be wary lah. Both feet on the ground right now. <laughs> So I uh, hope it doesn't rain anytime soon because I really want to get this review done but the riding experience on this road glide uh, you need to get used to it and then you enjoy the ride lah and this really appeal more to those guys 
who pull their bikes a lot and cross the border probably into the north south highway then they are able to unleash this beast you know <laughs> now when i met hadi yesterday and showed it off to him he says that you know if he has a convoy and there's a road glide the road glide will be the first bike <laughs> it will be the lead bike lah basically okay so we're gonna make a left turn right here into upper cross street I have to give way to buses lah huh? <laughs> it's scary at first honestly speaking guys it's really scary at first when you're riding this bike and trying to negotiate the city streets making that turn you know but now I feel pretty much confident if you really like the bike it you don't be intimidated by it lah you control the bike not let the bike control you ah <laughs> you know I've always loved the gold wing but now that I've tried on the road glide I must say that I'm loving it right now I really love it <laughs> and I actually have a, road, a model of a road glide at home you know uh, because I don't know I kind of <laughs> I did not know I didn't know that it was a neutral right now so oh man I think we were in second gear just now <laughs> okay so let's make a left right here you know, you really have to be slow when you're negotiating bends or corners like this You cannot just simply whack the bike, you have to control the throttle, you know oh. and, and the torque on the Milwaukee 8114 on this is really amazing, you know It can be as fast as you want it to Alright, so we're gonna go into the highway Ah. Oh. And this is where the road glide really belongs ah. It belongs on the highway, it doesn't belong on the city streets Because it just, it just doesn't want to be tamed It just wants to go fast And that's where the road glide really feels at home oh, oh. Man, I wish I could really bring this out to Malaysia It would be awesome man, if you can go above 100 on this Man, <laughs> I really love the road glide, man. Oh, it would really appeal to guys like myself who like to go longer distances and touring. And on the American interstate, I can imagine, you know, when you're going at high speeds and that straight road. Oh, it's just gonna do wonders. It's really gonna be a comfortable of a ride, you know. And it is. It's really a comfortable ride when you're on the highway right now. Oh man, I don't really dare to lane split with this right now because I don't know, maybe I'm scared <laughs> I'm scared because the white, the white nature of this bike is really uh, <laughs> intimidating I've gotten to that point where I'm confident to lane split on a road glide And usually I see riders who are riding uh, road glides They don't really lane split And I would just, you know, go in between them <laughs> while they're stuck behind another vehicle <laughs> But damn, it's really a king of the road, man. You can feel the attention on you right now. Because it's really that eye-catching, you know. And changing lanes and negotiating bends on the highway. It's really a dream on this bike. And that rumble between your legs and the sound that it gives out. Oh, man. <laughs> you don't really hear this on any other bike but a Harley-Davidson. Oh, man. I really wish I could bring this out to Malaysia and really test this out to its limit man like go and be 140, 150 down the north-south highway I'd probably reach KL in under two and a half hours <laughs> and the infotainment system as you can see it switches to dark and light mode accordingly when you're in the sun it switches to a light mode and when you're in the tunnel just now it's in the dark mode if you observed it I've had three days with the Harley Road Glide and I must say that with its huge size and weight of 372 kg uh, at first it's pretty intimidating and I was quite apprehensive to get on it lah. but I decided that you know I should take a leap of faith and just give it a go and try it out 
and I brief myself to do it like basically so once I get the feel of the handling of the bike I feel very much confident uh, to tame the bike like basically with that said the Harley Rogue Glide actually falls into the category of uh, these bagger uh, motorcycles with the likes of the Honda Goldwing or the BMW K1600B this bike in my personal opinion, it's definitely not a bike for Singapore roads. Okay, <laughs> it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy, and a very powerful bike for the city streets. Best for highway rides and long distance tourists. Not meant for beginner riders. Riders who definitely need some experience to actually tame the road glide. Overall, I'm pretty much impressed with the road glide. It's that big, clunky American interstate tourer that has a reputation, history, and lifestyle attached to it. Um, surprised with the riding tech on the machine with ride by wire, cornering enhanced link ABS, traction control, cruise control, drag talk slip control system. All of this helps with the safety and the comfort of the rider. And I'm, with that in mind, I feel pretty much confident riding on it. Harley actually did a great job of hiding all the riding tech without compromising on the Road Glide's classic look and feel. And I personally feel like the boombox infotainment system is very versatile, very easy to understand and navigate. The built-in GPS navigation is a whole new level in the road glide. The stock speakers on this are really loud and no issues with listening in while you're riding. A great companion for those long distance highway rides. And pretty fast bike also. The Milwaukee 8 114 has the power and torque to get up to speed on the highway. However, it's a bit cumbersome on city streets, but it handles like a dream on the highway. It can get a bit hot, <laughs> um, especially on city riding. So coming to my final point, <laughs> the road glide is definitely not for everybody. And it caters to a certain niche of riders, namely Harley fans, riders who tour a lot, riders wanting style over practicality. Even though this has the practicality, it's big, clunky nature, it's really not practical for Singapore streets. It's a bike that commands attention and respect when you're riding on the road. Back with the brand, reputation and law of Harley Davidson, everyone will stare at this bike. Everybody, even drivers, pedestrians will look at it. And you know, touring convoy, if there's a road glide in it, the road glide will be at the front of the convoy, leading the whole convoy. <laughs> With the lifestyle and reputation and history attached to the road glide and the brand Harley Davidson, it's really at the center of attention. Harley riders will give you that thumbs up and you'll be the envy of all the riders that have never owned a road glide. Love it or hate it, if it's not a beggar motorcycle, it's definitely above of whatever the hell we are riding right now. And the appearance and the branding of Harley Davidson speaks for itself. And once again, which thanks to Harley Davidson Asia Pacific for loaning me this bike for the review. You can actually contact Harley Davidson of Singapore, get in touch with them to rent the road glide and test ride this bike. And yeah, give it a shot. Who knows? You may think that it's clunky and too big for the roads, but in the end, I uh, had no issues uh, taming and handling the bike. Lah. And it's raining right now. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up this review. And that's it for the vlog. And we'll see you in the next one.